the people, most people that come with this stuff, um, usually express a lot of their emotions, their opinions, but when, upon examination, they have limited scholarship. Okay. Okay. There's a serious issue with our people that's become not only an annoyance, but it's also adding to the confusion of our people. Our people seem to enjoy regurgitating misinformation, pseudoscience, rather than facts and truth. Who have been misguided through biblical teachings, white supremacist academics, social scientific warfare. The last thing we need is for our own kind to do the same. For whatever reason, maybe self-hate or whatever, these brothers seem to be mightily impressed with their own one-sided views and absurd notions of claiming to be the label more. This term needs to be addressed and has become the new car blanche or chic label. We have people in our community who may have a certain disdain for the continent, the people, ancestry, and the history of the land we were stolen from. The adoption of this term has even drawn a division amongst us. So now we have some who'd rather take on this term than an African, black, Negro, or as go as far as saying being the crayon. They go as far as demonizing the continent and names we've taken on. Some of them have even taken on in as far as saying back as far as ancient ancestry of Timbuktu and Kanuki. The identity of our people is not that hard to know about. And we are who we are now as we are the same people as in the past. Our people are global. Our ancestry has traveled across the globe, everywhere we went. As conscious-minded thinkers and believers to continue to allow this group with this pseudo rhetoric without sources, truths, and science to back it up. Tonight it stops. We will expel the lies and the attacks on our ancestors. I'd like to introduce the panel for tonight. We have Brother Akil. We have Brother Kevin Williams. We have myself, Brother Africanus. And I'd like to introduce the brothers from the Amin Ra squad, Team Osiris, Brother Black Panther, and Brother Ngozi. Little Black African here. Power. Black African Power, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. You know, another day is being an African. Black Panther in the same with my man, the mad scientist in Gozi. The mad scientist in the building. Peace, brother. Yes, sir. Peace and Lord to the family. Peace, bro. Peace. Peace. Now, you know, we just played a clip from two brothers we all familiar with. Uh, his brother, the elder. Excuse me, let me give him his proper respect. The elder, uh, Taj Bay, uh, he was stating, you know, about even Asiatic, European descent, and this more title. Now, brothers, let me ask you. First question, are we all Moors? Absolutely not. Mm. Now, Absolutely not. what is the origin or the meaning of the term Moor? Well, as far as my research says, the uh, linguistically you can change the word more to the word uh, nar, n a r. I'm gonna N-A-R. yeah. Uh, that's Nilo Saharan uh, language, and it basically means water. Mm. I'm gonna um, add on. A, I'm gonna add on to what my brother saying. So when I walk out this store, because I would like to elaborate on his term more, and he said no, and he has an explanation, and I'm gonna say yes in the sense of description, because if you go back into in time, the term more linguistically, when the, when, the, when the Macedonians first came in contact with people in, north, in the northern part of the continent, Libyans, they looked at them and called them motos, and motos meant scorched because of the description of their dark pigment. And later on in Mauritania, you had a tribe of Tarig, before they were called Tarig, they were called Mori, and the type of Berber or Amazigh type people that they were, with the Tariq Berbers that you find in northern Mali and also in northern Niger. So as a description, you will be classified as a Moor based off somebody else calling you that based off their observation looking at you because of your dark pigment. Did you call yourself that? No. There came a time in 1506 after we lost power in Spain. The Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors. M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. Let me bring my comrade, Brother Kevin Williams, in. He's going to continue with a Q&A with the Amin Ra squad. Uh, let me see. Where you at, Brother Kevin? Kevin Will, you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here, brother. Peace, Peace Black, brother. Black African power. Peace, family. Peace, Amin Ra squad. Black African power. Big up yourself. 
you know, for spreading all the knowledge that you do. Yeah, man, you know, uh, this is this is a good topic, man. You know, uh, I mean, this is something that a lot of people, you know, talk about over year, over the years, you know, saying, you know, what wars and war or this that. You know, I'm going to keep my um questions a little brief, man. I just want to know, man, what, what what's the origin of the feds, man? What, what, where did that come about? The origin of the fez, um, the, the fez is basically a derivative of, there's an Egyptian headdress, which is called the tarbush, and you'll find that the tarbush and the fez are basically the same thing. Um, you actually have some people that actually still make the tarbush on the streets of Egypt, um, some of the street vendors. Um, That's correct. That is, the, the tarbush is T-A-R-B-O-O-S-H is one of the spellings of it. Um, it's basically the, the fest came out as a variation of the of the turban. Um, so it, it was actually like a one two combination. You would have like the turban woven around and then the fez on the top. So the fez was kind of used because the turban was kind of cumbersome at that time. The oldest uh, the oldest fez that I've seen was actually in the Americas. It's uh, about uh, is a five thousand year old civilization which is recognized as the oldest civilization in the Americas, which is called Corral Supe, the C-A-R-A-L-S-U-P-E hyphen, Corral Supe. And on that 5,000-year-old organization, you'll, you'll see individuals on the, on the wall writing that actually have a fez. Um, so that's that's the verified that by seen. UNESCO as well. Indeed, indeed. That's verified by UNESCO, because um, I, I had to go look it up when the brother told me the first time. Oh, for sure, for I sure. You know, I, I, I ain't no passion about it. Oh info. man, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's yeah, it's, it's very important. So that's that's basically where where the fest comes from, brother. It's like it's like a royal headdress, or it's like a headdress that was used by royalty, also as an indication of that. Also, was used later on for Europeans to be put on African tribal people to show that these African tribal people are working for me. So it's like an indicator, absolutely, of of, of working. Um, or being in control of the European or colonial powers. That's what that came on later on also. Mm. Brother, this is definitely correct. Can I can I touch on that real fast? Go ahead. Of course, Go ahead, brother. I want to read something. It says, from the 19th century, the Fez was widely adopted as a headdress of locally recruited native soldiers among various colonial places throughout the world. French, throughout the world. French and North African regiments wore fed red fezes with detachable tassels of various colors. It was an off-duty affection of the doors to wear fezes at different angles according to the regiment. French officers of the North African units during the 1930s often wore the same fez as their men with rank and insignia attached. Libyan battalions and squadrons of Italian colonial forces wore lower red fezes over white skull caps. The Mali and Eritrean regiments in the Italian service wore high red fezes with colorful tooths that varied according to the unit. German Asgaris in East Africa wore their fezes with khaki covers on nearly all occasions. So this is just to back up what Brother Ish said about them recruiting Africans and putting them in different fezes according to their rank structure and being, you know, I'm in charge of you. You wear my fez. That's, you know, that's a uh, that's good information, but not to be confused, not to be confused with the crown of the uh, of of, an, of the pharaoh, the, the when the merger of the uh, upper and lower Kemet, of upper and lower, uh, not to confuse it with Absolutely that because not. that was yeah because that was as you see because I've been on uh, Infodishi on tours of Infodishi at the Met and he had you know pulled us to the side and corrected everybody there and not to confuse it with that because we do see the pharaohs. When they upper, uh, <laughs> upper and lower, there was a white and a red, so we could get an understanding of that. Yeah, but the ostrich and the, and the red kind. That's, that's exactly. Totally different. So let's, so let's not get. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's just bad scholarship. I've seen people try to make that jump and say <laughs> that's the origin of the fans. That's just that's that's we don't engage in that. That's just that's <laughs> false. Don't forget. Let me ask you this. Now let me ask you this though, Ish. Let me ask you this, Ish. How do you feel? about when you see brothers who wear the fez on the streets, the elders, the brothers in the community, the brothers in the Moorish, American Moorish Temple Science, um, 
how do you feel when you see them wear it? Do you think they know the origins of the Fez, or are they just wearing it as – is it symbolic to them, or do they feel as though it's just a part of the uniform? Like, uh, just give me – what's your overview about that? Like when you see brothers in the streets and in the temple, when you see them wear the Fez, do you think they have an understanding of what the Fez is? Overall, brother, it's just an indication of, of of identity, you know, nothing more, nothing less. If you're more, you're going to have, like, family identifiers. You're going to be an L, a Bay, an Ali, you know, in order to identify yourself, you're going to wear a fez. The fezes have various meanings sometimes. You'll see somewhere the black, somewhere the, the, the traditional maroon, you know. So there, there are various reasons of maybe a specific organization um, may, may wear one for a specific reason, but it's just it's just family identifier to show that you're proclaiming your identity and nationality. Right now, it's Zanzibar we're talking about still. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, why is there some Tanzanians mm-hmm. in Zanzibar called the Sufi Brotherhood wearing fezes? This is not a new brotherhood. <laughs> it's not right? like something they made up yesterday, or. You know, you can't make this up yesterday. The Sufi Brotherhood in Tanzania, Mm -hmm. and they were in feathers? Mm -hmm. How come they're not the Shiite Brotherhood or the Sunni Brotherhood? Mm -hmm. Why are they the Sufi Brotherhood and wearing feathers? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's a lesson of how broad the scope of the Moors is. That when Noble Juali in historical message talks about the Moors as Mohammedans, he's not talking about some Sunnis and Shiites. He's talking about Sufis. Mm-hmm. He's talking about highly mystical mm-hmm. individuals. Mm-hmm. Highly mystical. They might even do some stuff in front of you, make you <laughs> blink a little bit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Because it's it's not the African Brotherhood. It's not even the Tanzanian Brotherhood. Not the Zanzibar Brotherhood, right? The, the Sufi, the Sufi Brotherhood. That word is in there. That word's reason, in there. Right? Right? All of them wearing feathers. Mm. This is the continent where all these people say that they come from. And and the the black false leaders. Mm. Right? The black agents. Black power, black supremacy, all those people there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They're going to say that feathers have nothing to do with the continent as a whole. And this is Tanzania, brothers wearing feathers called the Sufi Brotherhood. So from from Mali to Zanzibar to Eritrea. To, yeah, right across. Right, right across. Right the across. Sahara Desert, these people. Right. <laughs> rocking it. Rocking it. From North Morocco down. <laughs> right. Which means everybody really knows, Mm -hmm. except these people in North America. Mm -hmm. Like everybody really knows. Like everybody. Because when we went, we went to Japan and showed feathers. So the heads are rocking out. We went to to, to Easter Island and showed feathers. Right? Uh, British Columbia. British Columbia. Asia. (laughs) Right? Indonesia, Philippines, us here are just all over the continent of of Africa, mm-hmm. Europe, Spain, India, India, all these places, America, South, mm-hmm. North, Central, Caribbean islands, mm-hmm. everywhere. Everybody knows about Islam and the customs of Islam, mm-hmm. right? Everybody knows what's up.